Welcome to Lecture Series 15, and this series will be focused on developmental psychology. We'll spend a lot of time talking about babies and how they change and what they learn and how they learn it. Developmental psychology is the field of psychology that essentially studies change. It's the scientific study of change as we age. Developmental psychology is often associated with the study of babies, but it actually includes adults. It's the study of everything from the, the moment you're a zygote until the day you die. And it covers a lot of different areas. Uh, so it, you could focus on biological changes, you could focus on genetics, uh, changes in social interaction, perception, personality, everything. There are some basic assumptions that are made in the field of developmental psychology. And one of them is that every period of our life, we are capable of change. So sometimes you'll hear kids say, well, when I'm all grown up, so the assumption there with that kind of statement being that there's lots and lots of change until the point you become an adult and then there's no more change. That does not exist. We are constantly changing at every point in our life. And that change always includes improvements in some things and a loss or degradation in other things. And that doesn't matter whether you're a baby or an old person, you're always improving at some things and getting worse at others. Developmental psychologists also assume that you need both nature and nurture to explain how we are and how we change. So genetics is not enough, environment is not enough. You need to study both of them and their interaction to understand how we become the people we become and how we change. Developmental psychologists take our lifespan and cut it into different pieces. Uh, in this lecture, we're actually not going to talk about adulthood. So we are just going to focus on uh, prenatal so prenatal means before you're born, right? So that's from conception to birth. Infancy, which is the first two years of life. So from birth until your second birthday. And then childhood is from your second birthday until you're 12 years old or just before puberty. But again, developmental psychology, colleges study all of these stages. Let's start with prenatal development. Within that period, typically nine months of prenatal development, uh, developmental psychologists cut up prenatal development into three more phases. The first phase is called germ the germinal stage. It's basically when you were just a single cell um, until you developed into a little blob of cells. Uh, when you were a single cell, that was called a zygote. Um, and it's during this stage that the placenta and the umbilical cord form. So important things since that's how you get on your nutrition. The embryonic stage when you were an embryo is defined as two weeks to two months. Um, and during the embryonic stage, the major parts of the body start to develop. So like the heart. And then there's the fetal stage we refer to you and your cute little fetus, um, we refer to you as a fetus, uh, that stage is thought to occur from the um, prenatal stage of two months, so when you're just two months old until you're born. Um, and when the embryo becomes a fetus in the fetal stage, then you can really see that something approximating a human is happening, but we'll get there. We'll get there. Okay, let's talk about the zygote. So if you, if somebody took a picture of you uh, on the very first day of your existence, you would look like this, a zygote. Actually, before you were even a zygote, you'd look like the picture on the left, right? It'd be one sperm and one egg, and typically. And uh, what happens is the sperm gets near the egg and for some reason, the egg selects one of the sperm and sucks it in. Uh, once that happens, the egg is now considered fertilized 
and becomes a zygote. So the zygote is on the right. That's your first day of life. There's your picture. I guess you could put that up with all your back to school pictures if you wanted. Um, who knows? Maybe that's a picture of you. But, um, every single cell in your body, whether it's your brain or your hair, comes from that zygote, which is kind of crazy, right? The zygote divides and divides. So you start off as one cell during your first day of life. And then as you're moving to day two, um, you develop into two and then four cells and from four to eight and from eight to 16. And eventually, by about the end of the week, you are a clump of cells. Um, each of those cells, every time the zygote divides and the divides again, um, each one of those cells contains all of your DNA. So um, every cell has um, 46 or, or 23 pairs of chromosomes. And there's a picture that's um, colored here on the right. Those are photographs of, take through a microscope, of your 26, I'm sorry, 23 pairs of chromosomes. And each of those chromosomes contains a whole lot of genes. So when we talk about genes, we're talking about um, little teeny pieces of a chromosome, and each little teeny piece codes for some function. So at the moment uh, that you're conceived, when the zygote forms, when you're just one cell, you have in you uh, 46 chromosomes, which are really 23 pairs of chromosomes, because you get of the pair, you get one from mom and one from dad, so 23 pairs. And in those 23 pairs of chromosomes, you've got 25,000 genes. And those 25,000 genes play a really big role in who you turn out to be. Now, I've got a drawing up here I'd like you to take a look at. It's a drawing of a lot of different animals. Uh, how many are there? Eight. Eight different animals when they are still an embryo. So you can easily pick out the human embryo here, right? Go ahead, pick it out. Which, which one's a human embryo? Well, look carefully, you'll find it. No, you won't, will you? It's really hard. In fact, um, in the old days, people thought that from the moment you were conceived, there was actually a little teeny version of you. So just like you are now, but shrunk down teeny, teeny, teeny. Uh, here's a picture of it from an old uh, medical book um, showing that there's a little teeny ver version of you in the single sperm cells that fertilize the egg that made you. Um, that's called pre-formationism. It's wrong, uh, but it's adorable, right? You gotta give them credit. Um, in, that's not what we look like at all. So check out the embryos of these eight different animals. And, you know, they're not pretty. Nobody would want to put a picture of that up on, up on your wall, right? It's, it's kind of gross. You look like a lizard. It was actually the picture on the far right. That was the picture of the human embryo. Uh, in the middle stage is a more advanced stage of the embryo. And, you know, I still couldn't pick out a, a human, even if I was looking at an older embryo. Um, but if we go to about the third month uh, prenatal, uh, then you can see something that starts to look like a human being. And in these other pictures, you can see, okay, it makes sense that the fourth one on, from the left is a chicken and the third one is a turtle. And let's see, the fifth one's a pig, a cow, and a rabbit. Um, the, the two on the far left are a, a fish and a salamander. Just to give you a sense, when we start out, we're not pretty. <laughs> we look just like, well, like a salamander. Here are um, three pictures and a, and a photograph of what people look like during the first couple of months prenatally. Now, when I laugh at how ugly we are um, as an embryo, like look at that first month, um, that looks like something out of a space alien movie. Um, 
that creature is actually the size of a poppy seed. And just to remind you what a poppy seed looks like, poppy seed bagels are really popular. Each little speck on a poppy seed bagel, which is, you know, really about the size of the end of a pencil, that's how big you were as this ugly sort of lizard person um, in your first month of life. Your second month of life, you're still looking kind of space alien-y. You're a little bigger. Now you're the size of a kidney bean. Um, by the third month of life, now we refer to you not as an embryo anymore, but as a fetus. And you're about the size of a small lime. After about six months, um, you are you weigh about a, a pound and a quarter. Uh, seven months, you're about the size of an eggplant. Um, so, you know, we don't start out looking like we do when we're born or adults or any of that. We start out being really strange looking and teeny, 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 right? The size of a poppy seed at the end of one month. Uh, you guys know about twins, but I thought this would be a good place to just insert this real quickly. There are actually two types of twins and they're very, very different. Um, Sometimes what happens is instead of, during fertilization, instead of uh, one egg and one sperm fusing, there are actually two eggs and each is fused with a different sperm. So those are called fraternal twins and fraternal twins are just like regular siblings, but they're born at the same time. That's very different from the other type of twin, which is an identical twin. And an identical twin occurs when you start out with one egg and one sperm and they fuse, but then that zygote, instead of just doubling and staying contained within itself, it splits. So you have two genetically identical people, clones. And of course they're born at the same time. So identical twins, have identical genes, at least at the beginning. Okay, come right back and we'll talk about how you learn to see and read.